Hey everyone, it's Cliff from Enochian.today, and in this video I wanted to talk a bit about the book Liber Loga, which is the second main part of the Enochian system. The first being the Enochian Heptarchy, and the last being the Watchtowers. So I'm going to start out just giving an overview of the transmission. I'm going to slide around exactly its structure and then go instead into why you would go about making this. And then I'm going to talk about a little bit about the structure, and that'll be it for this video. I'll go ahead and go into how one would go about making this, and one is instructed to go about making this in a later video, and maybe a, a later series of videos, to be honest with you, because it really is a big, big topic. So, okay, what is, you know, how did this come about? So, for the history of this, and really the entirety of the Enochian transmission, I do recommend Father Aaron Leach's book, The Enochian Saga. F Father Leach has done a really good job, a very comprehensive job, in pulling everything about Enochian together and synthesizing it into a good narrative that's easy to follow, as well as sort of some pretty good meta-commentary about what is happening during the whole transmission and things that John D. and Edward Kelly may have missed or done wrong or whatever. But overall, it's a really, his is a really good analysis and he's got very deep, very comprehensive knowledge of the system. So I do recommend that book. I also recommend most of his other books, The Angelical Language. And, I, and I'm only saying that because I haven't, I'm sure I have not read all of his other books, but related to Enochian, they're all really good the ones that I've been able to obtain. So I do recommend the Enochian Saga. I recommend the Angelical Language, Volumes 1 and 2. And I also recommend his Essential Enochian Grimoire. Not all at once. Obviously, do things according to your budget and as time allows. But I do really recommend, in particular, his work on Enochian. So another thing that I wanted to mention, too, is that there is some information that he has published on his website that I'm also going to recommend in this video uh, that apparently it may have been taken from a previous draft. And I'll go ahead and post the link to those. Uh, so apparently he has kindly made those publicly available and kept them up so you can sort of see a little bit about what he was thinking uh, in an earlier draft. I want to say that these are like earlier drafts of his essentially Nokian grimoire, that some of that information is still very important and is, is work with, workable, but it's not actually in the final draft. So that's why I do recommend supporting your author by going ahead and buying his other works, uh, if, if, if it's in your budget, or renting it. You know, Obviously, we can't all do that, or checking it out from a local library, stuff like that. These are all things that I recommend to anybody You know, to find as many sources as you can Try your best to cross-reference them, take notes, all of that stuff. But don't let the knowledge of something, the obtaining of perfect knowledge of something, be the impediment or the obstacle to starting to work with it. Okay, so how did this come about? So as I mentioned, it's the second part of the system. Libra Loga came after the first part, which was the Enochian Heptarchy, which is the system of angelic kings, princes, ministers, and governors. And it's really this n nice and tidy system of, of lots of angel names that are associated with various powers that you can call upon and request, uh, some kind of angelic or heavenly intervention or, or help with whatever it is you're dealing with or facing. And there are lots of powers associated with that, but the heptarchy, the word heptarchy means seven rulers or a rulership system or a system of government or rulership involving seven rulers. Now, I do recommend, you know, sort of just becoming familiar with the different parts of the system. And even though Libra Loga is the second part of the system, I would also actually recommend also learning about the watchtowers and the watchtower tablets. But Libra Loga is, as a book, 
it's not only the part of the transmission, but it's also a tool that you can make. You can make a copy of the book, what is known as a perfected copy of the book. So John Dee and Edward Kelly receive this as part of the transmission. And what is it now? So what's it look like, all of that? Well, let me go ahead and change perspective. So this is my copy of Libre Loga. I finished making this in early 21. And as you can see, it's a book with this nice light blue, sky blue cover. There's a little bit of a stain here, but you know, I'm only human. Um, and so it's this nice sky blue silk cover that I've placed on top of it. I added a little bit of tape here, and this is actually the actual title of the book, which is Amzes Nageses Harde. So this title actually, and I'll, I'll get to this in a second, but it has a different meaning from Liber Loga. The word Loga means speech of God. So it's in John Dee's, John Dee sort of named it this, but it's the book of the speech of God. If you use that translation, meshing up, mashing up an a Latin word liber with the book, lo, the, which means book, and then the Enochian word loga, which means speech of God. So this is, and it, as you'll notice, this book, it opens uh, on the left instead of on the right, because Enochian is written from right to left. Now, I'm just going to give you a flavor of this to let you know just the size of it. I'm going to skip this page, this first page, which is actually much bigger than it looks. And instead, just sort of show you like that. And this is something I could have like made perfect grids here. I foolishly did not do this, but I didn't want to go back and change it. I felt that this was good enough. But as you can see here, right after that, I started making grids and it was, things got a lot better. So what is this? It's a bunch of Enochian letters. Now, this was not the way that John Dee and Edward Kelly received this book. It was received with in English letters, and the assumption was that they were supposed to copy it from English letters or Latin letters to Enochian letters. And if you look at the thickness of the book, you can see here, this probably looks like more pages than it is, but it's nine, it's 49 pages overall, or 49 sheets or leaves of paper. Now, let's just back up and just start with this whole overview, but I wanted to give to let you all be able to see kind of what it looks like. And I am not the only one who has made this. I've talked with other folks who preceded me. I'm just letting you know that this is what happened when I made this copy. So, okay, let's get into the actual overview. So, as I mentioned, the actual book, it's it's commonly called Liber Loga, but its, tech, its true name is Amzes Nageses Harde, which means let those that fear God and are worthy read. In other words, it's a book. I already mentioned it's the second part of the Enochian system. The first being the Heptarchy, which has mainly planet, planetary and sephirotic power. If you're into Kabbalah, you can look that up. And then it also has the third part of the Enochian system, which is the Watchtowers, Elements, and Aethers. Those are kind of the key parts to that. Now, the next thing you should know is that Libra Loga is actually the first of three books uh, prescribed. It's not necessarily the first of three received. There may, I think there were like five at least. Uh, Aaron Leach actually was kind enough to, you, you know, review his own book and point me out because it wasn't indexed. But he pointed, I just mentioned I was wondering about the books and, you know, where they were mentioned. Um, and so there were a couple of other ones. There was like a, a fiery book and a, an ivory book. But it is the first of the three books prescribed. In other words, told John and Dee and Edward Kelly were told to make these. Another book that they were told to make was the Book of Silvered Leaves and finally the Book of Supplications. The Book of Supplications is a, a pretty... It's used mainly as part of the 19-day ritual. So if you've been watching my series on Enochian, you can, you can take a look at that. Um... Pretty much it's, and I've put in links and stuff like that, so you can figure out how to make your own version of this. I don't go into too much detail. That's really something more just kind of from the heart. And then the Book of Silvered Leaves, and I may do a separate uh, episode on that. I haven't decided yet. Now, I already mentioned uh, the Enochian Saga by Aaron Leach. And if you're going to make your own copy of this, or if you just want a reference to this, you're going to want to look at uh, this website, fergoff.wordpress.com. I'll put that link and the link to Aaron Leach's book, Father Aaron Leach's book, in the comment in the description. And you'll also want to take a look at the manuscripts here on fergoff.wordpress.com. 
Sloan 3188 and 3189, as well as the Cotton Appendix 1. Now, I mentioned that you're also going to, Aaron Leach has put up some supplementary material on his tripod website, which is, uh, you can search for the word Jebafall here, and you're going to get uh, two chapters if you do this in Google, for example. Chapter, chapters four and two are pretty important. Chapter two especially, but chapter four, uh, I don't know why I, wrote, why I wrote that first. I think because that was the first thing that came up in using DuckDuckGo, but that was not the best. <laughs> that was, it didn't come up with chapter two, which is really what you'll want for doing Libre Logan. But if you search this word, Jebafall, and I'll go ahead and put that word in, in the link, and I'll, try, I'll put in direct links, because Father Leach has kept those up. Okay, so again, this is just kind of the overview. Now, in terms of what it's composed of, there are 49 leaves or sheets of paper, uh, which means you have 98 sides or, you know, pages, you know, page one, but the other side of the page, you know, we call that page two. So just be aware. So for this reason, you know, because they're referred to as, as leaves, we usually talk about leaf 1A and then 1B and then 2A, 2B, etc. Just to talk about, okay, front and back, okay? Now, most of these are going to be in a 49 by 49 tabular format with titles. The exception being that leaf one, both the front and back, does not have a title, and it's composed of uh, words, individual words within each of those cells, and it, with the exception of the last cells, the last, the last nine rows of cells on leaf 1b, which is nothing but letters, letters and some uh, punctuation. Leaf 49 is also untitled. So much like the first shall be last and last shall be first, you see from Matthew, I, think, I want to say Matthew 12, you see the same pattern that the angels have brought forward. And it is also untitled. And you're going to have to make decisions on this one. I'll get into that when I actually go over leaf 49 and the way it was delivered. Now, the one of the things I wanted to mention, of course, with these 49 leaves of paper that is used to, that is the, the content of the in, inside of the book of Libra Loga, with the exception, of course, of the title, is that these 49 leaves are basically paralleling the 49 calls. And the 49 calls were actually received after the book of Libra Loga was transmitted. All right, so now why might one make it? Well, one, one big reason, obviously, is the angels say so. They're tapped into stuff you're not. So maybe it would be a good idea to listen to them. <laughs> but I can tell you also some, from some experience about why and, and some rationales about why else you want, want to make that. So the one from experience is, is that as I made this, I found that there were a lot of subtle changes to the subtle body. Your energy system, your chakra system, what have you, your, it will change. And this is really what I found when I did it. It felt like every time I would write a letter, an individual letter, as I, or as I was going through, it's like I would feel like a little teeny tiny lock inside me open, right? Or a tiny channel open up. And I don't know how else to describe that except by saying it like that, that directly. So another thing I would say is that this is a an overall thing that Jason Louvre has noticed is that generally speaking, making the Enochian furniture, it helps to insulate one from sort of this raw Enochian energy. And what is the analogy he uses is it's like plugging your plugging a fork into uh, an electrical socket. You're going to get shocked, but if that let's say that fork had insulation on it, uh, then you would be fine. So, or, you know, more fine, let's put it that way. And you can actually work with the energies in a, in a safer manner. And this has been my experience too. It, it enhances, it refines, and it insulates you from bad effects of, the, of just trying to deal with, you know, angelic energy directly. Okay. So the next reason you would use this is as part of a ritual known as Jebafal, or what we try to reconstruct as Jebafal. We know that this ritual was one that John Dean and Edward Kelly were supposed to use to undergo as part of their reception of the Enochian system. And we don't know what that is. So whatever was to be done, this was not something that we have any records of right now. 
but we do have a lot of description about what it was supposed to be about. So I'll go over in a later video or a series of videos, most likely an attempt to reconstruct Jebafal, but we do know that it's related to wisdom. So just be aware that just in the actual working of this, there is a lot of stuff technically going on behind the scenes with your spiritual body, your subtle body, stuff like that, is that, that it is opening up a path to wisdom. So as part of this, it's been just my lived experience, and so I don't have any better, higher authority than that. It, it is more of a, a path to the rainbow body, which is talked about in Tibetan Buddhism. And I don't quite know how to describe it better than that, but suffice it to say that obviously if you're working with changes to the subtle body, most Buddhists who are like going to look at like Buddhist psycho-spiritual physiology, they would talk about, yeah, if you're going to improve the functioning of your, of your subtle body, then that's one of the things you're going to want if you're going to work to achieve a rainbow body. Okay, so another thing I would say is that it further deepens the 49 calls. It makes them more effective. You feel closer to them. That's just, again, this is just a subtle thing that I can say from my own experience is that, yeah, this is, this is what happens. And as a matter of fact, the 49 calls were delivered after Libo Loga was completed, uh, the perfected copy by John D. and Edward Kelly. Now, finally... I wanted to talk about the reason you would do this, and that is working on and through issues in the heart, right? We do not come through life unscathed, right? If you have made it here, you have been through some stuff. So there's a lot of things that can go on in terms of wounds, in, to, in terms of hurts, and in terms of not feeling good about oneself or other people that are really things that you're going to want to work through as a human being, okay? Now, obviously, seeking wisdom is one of the ways you're going to work on issues in the heart. Uh, you know, subtle changes to the subtle body, the heart chakra is one part of the subtle body. And it's just my experience having gone through, worked through this spiritual practice, that a lot of these things and issues in my own heart were resolved. And what am I talking about? What does that even mean? Well, things like bad attitudes obsessions and imbalances. All of these are things that obviously you would want to work with as any person would want to work through with and through in order to just maintain a good psychological health. Okay, so that's it as far as the what and the why. So the next thing I wanted to touch on is a little bit about the amount of work that goes into it. And I'm just going to be honest, it is a lot of work. It took me about, I think I said, you know, nearly a thousand hours or roughly a thousand hours worth of work. It was a lot, but I don't regret any of it. So that should tell you something. Um, I also wanted to say that this is not the only path that you can take. If you, if you are not really called to this, I would not tell you to, to follow it. Okay. If you are called to it though, that's what this information is for. Okay. Um, and that's about it. And I know this is kind of a niche field. Uh, not everybody is interested in this, but I did want to lay out some of this for the people who are. So with all of that said, uh, lots of love from my heart to yours. I wanted to wish everybody who hasn't already experienced it yet, seeing as I'm in America and uh, in the afternoon, uh, on New Year's Eve, so some of you across the world are already in 2024. I am not yet, but I did want to wish each of you a happy new year and really just go out there in, you know, in love towards each other and towards yourself and to God. And with that, I'll sign off. Thanks so much.